Coming up, the June Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife. I finally get the TKL Knives Agent 001 in hand, and I'll show it to you here. And then 10 of my favorite multi-edge custom EDC fixies. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Extra Crispy 357. He says, excellent review of the Ronin 2. I'm quite late to the Yojimbo, Yojumbo, and Ronin 2 family, but I'm planning to get one of each over time. I wasn't sure if I wanted the fixed Ronin 2, but after watching your video, I definitely do. Thanks for taking the time to make this video and for all the great education. And I love that. Thank you so much. Extra crispy. Uh, education kind of elevates everything I do now. Uh, I really appreciate it. And you will love each and every one of those. And I have to say, you should add the mini Jim or the micro Jimbo to that list. Uh, the little tiny Chicago legal uh, version of the Yo Jimbo. It's awesome. Uh, next favorite comment was from Always Sun 999 on my embarrassing paper cut uh, test where I throw up the paper and, and try and cut it with the, with the giant Puzan Predator Hunter. He says, oh my God, I've been collecting knives for 30 years. I shit you not, yesterday I had this exact same idea for the first time in my life and I tried it. My phone is reading my thoughts, I think. Insane. Never did I get through a whole sheet in the air. Ha, love this channel. Well, first of all, thanks for the kind words. Love that you're uh, here and loving the channel. Uh, but it's funny that you mentioned this because uh, a, a work colleague and I, uh, uh, he does graphics uh, where I work. We were sitting down, we were working, and then we actually started talking about uh, baseball uh, bats because he used to play baseball and I got a new Louisville slugger. And in talking about baseball, which is something I never do, I just never do it. Uh, suddenly, my Instagram feed had all of this baseball stuff in it. And we were both like, so we tried to get it to go to gardening. So we started talking about gardening, something else we never talk about. And it didn't bite. But uh, yeah, your phone is reading your mind, no doubt about that. And uh, keep trying that uh, whole uh, paper cut test. It's, it's not as embarrassing after you do it a, a couple hundred times. All right, that said, uh, let us now get to a pocket check. Right front pocket today was the awesome American Blade Works uh, Model 2. Uh, love this thing. Uh, this was uh, his, well, this is Michael Martin's second knife. The first one, the Model 1, went through a long and um, exciting journey, uh, design journey, if you will. And I, I guess you can kind of say that uh, wholeheartedly because... Uh, he made a couple of knives uh, each iteration. He had six versions, and that's where he landed. And he sent them around all over the place. It was the uh, brotherhood of the traveling knife. He got a lot of different um, feedback on it and landed on that Model 1 design. Well, the Model 2 just came out right out of the gate, sort of perfect. Uh, a great action. This he makes. Uh, he's a one-man shop. And uh, makes these all by his lonesome, and they're amazing. This one is a titanium, milled titanium, uh, what do you call it? Not frame lock, liner lock. Nice, beefy liner lock. Great action. Uh, this blade, this was my first Magna Cut blade. Um, and I, I attributed how amazingly ground and sharp this is to the steel. I was like, wow, Magna Cut cuts like a laser. But really, the reality, yes, Magna Cut's a great steel, but the reality is, um, uh, American Blade Works blades are beautifully ground, uh, very, uh, comes to a very nice thin, uh, behind the edge uh, measurement. Not sure what it is, but, uh, it cuts like a dream. Um, I do love this thing. Uh, it'd be cool if he put his Warncliffe blade also on this. This is a sheep's foot. His Warncliffe, of course, is a Warncliffe, so it has more of a gradual slant and a bit of a pointier point. Uh, I think it'd look beautiful in that handle as well. By the way, let's just look at the handle. Gorgeous. And this knife looks amazing closed, too. And you know I talk about looks a lot of ni uh, on knives. It's my initial attraction to, to knives is through the looks. So 
does need to be mentioned. All right, had to turn that light up there. Okay, second, uh, this has not been leaving my pocket. I've been loving this, and it is for the size. This is the the mini cyborg jack from Jack Wolf Knives. This is the the uh, May 2024 release uh, in five different covers, and uh, this one is the blasted titanium with the purple anodized hardware so beautiful that hand rubbed satin clip point blade a unique shape uh very good for utility because it has that long straight and then sort of a straight portion up front a little bit like a tanto but separating them instead of a point is a belly and um, so this is a very very handy blade shape great action on this knife s90v and uh for me i gotta say the uh the the uh, size is just perfect, perfect size. It'd be cool to see him miniaturize uh, some of his other designs, uh, but he's got something way more exciting or different, I should say, uh, in the offing. And I know it's in the mail to me now, actually. Uh, so when you're listening to this, I'll have it in my hands and you probably know what it is, uh, but it's a fixed blade coming from Jack Wolf. I'm very excited for that. All right. I hope I didn't spill the beans, but I don't think I did. Uh, next up, uh, my fixed blade today started in my front left pocket but migrated very quickly to back right and stayed there all day and comfortably too and uh, i didn't feel self-conscious i was at work i didn't feel self-conscious about it uh or anything and uh no one no, no one said anything it was just riding in my back pocket uh the little ruffian from uh hogtooth knives now he sent me this to check out this is the very first uh, little ruffian he ever made course based on the full-size ruffian that you've seen here many many times that i love uh, so much uh, he sent this to me to check out i fell in love with it and he's gifted this to me and i uh, i'm really excited he, i'm going to send it back to him he's going to uh, inscribe something i think he has some sort of a smart aleck comment to inscribe or something on here it, maybe not smart aleck but uh, he was laughing he's like send it to me i have something i want to engrave in it so a uh, very nice gift from from uh Jack Wolf Knives. I mean, geez, what am I talking about? Hogtooth Knives. Um, Matt Chase, a uh, gentleman and a scholar and uh, a former Marine Scout sniper. Uh, you know, cool dude altogether. So look at this. Look at how it how it it's almost the size of this Jack Wolf knife. And it's definitely smaller than. Uh, the American Blade Works Model 2 opened up. This is a great pocket carry knife. I've been pocket carrying a lot recently. The, um, the where is it? Well, I don't have it here with me, but uh, the um, Beckwith Covert from Fisher Blades uh, that has been sent to me, and I've been carrying that, loving that. And then that has also gotten me to carry the um, the Northman again from Amtac Blades, which is a sweet knife that my dad got me, uh, but all pocket carry. Uh, so now three main pocket carry fixed blades, and. Uh, well, this hogtooth knife is a is a classy uh, version of that for, of that uh, style of knife. I would like to get a uh, put a little leather fob or lanyard on there, as it's sort of a three finger grip. Um, wouldn't wouldn't hurt to have. It's not three fingers. It's four fingers, but it's uh, just barely four fingers. It wouldn't hurt to have a lanyard there for the drawing, especially. All right, last up on me for emotional support and general fidget fidgetability. Uh, I had the Iridium. I love this knife. This is one of my favorite knives of 2023. The Kershaw Iridium. Uh, great, just sort of, I don't want to say beater knife because I don't feel like it's a beater knife. Just a great uh, D2. Uh, it, I mean, you, you say, uh, yeah, it looks like a beater knife from all the action on the blade. But I got to say, that was only like several boxes worth. This was not, this has not gotten as much work as it looks like it has. So something in the coating. Uh, gave up the ghost somewhat quickly, but we're not looking at raw metal there. We're just looking at a, a scuffed blade, which to me, you know, I like. It's like uh, battle wear on uh, on tank armor or something. Uh, aluminum handle. This has the best action, um, like some of the best action ever. And um, if I'm being 100% honest, it has the best bar lock I've come across so far. Bar none. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, it's better than ho the Hogs I have. Maybe it's just this particular Kershaw that I have in my hands right now, but but this bar lock is, to me, better than Benchmade, better than um, <clears throat> Hogue, uh, and better than Kaiser, 
which does a really great one and and any others that i've ever experienced that one's the best one so anyway that's what i had on me today what did you have on you it's a funny looking assortment when it, when the uh, fixed blade is the smallest or nearly uh the smallest knife there uh let me know what you had drop it in the comments below and uh help inspire me um to i don't know open my horizons a little bit and check out other knives. Speaking of inspiration, uh, I want to thank a brand new gentleman junkie. And uh, it does, uh, it is a bit of inspiration when you know that there's someone out there who would part with their money to help the Knife Junkie podcast. So I wanted to say thank you, Larry Elizondo, for becoming a gentleman junkie. It's greatly appreciated. And now that means now this month, or uh, the, the month of June, uh, you, June 2024, you stand to win a really cool knife from Utectic, and that is Leong Ma's company. It's his sort of uh, uh, budget-friendly company or high-value company, if you will. Um, he does a lot of really high-end designs that get made by uh, Riot, but this Utectic line, and you can see the only branding is right there on the pivot, super classy uh, and simple. Uh, are the eutectics uh, these are the ones that you can kind of get if you want to get your hands on leong ma design like i did but you know you you you're not maybe ready to fork over for his um for his premium stuff you go to eutectic and and it's this one the trinity and then there's the uh he also has this field duty um what is this Field grade field duty, I think it's called something like that. So this is the Trinity. This is the giveaway knife. I love. Look at that beautiful uh, clip point profile there. Long opening hole, flipper, generous choil. Uh, it's three point seven. Yeah, about three point six inches uh, in blade length, and you get incredible action. It's very thinly ground. That's fourteen C twenty eight and blade steel and great uh, g10 handles i gotta say uh, i don't have many orange knives but it's been really cool having these on my desk um and uh i don't know well maybe there's an orange knife in my future or maybe uh maybe i just forget to give this one away and uh and it lives here who knows uh, but this eutectic trinity could be yours larry elizondo or any of you other fantastic gentlemen junkies uh, and i believe you are all gentlemen i'm not sure i don't think we have any lady gentlemen junkies here these days um but your patronage is greatly appreciated keep your eyes peeled for this june uh, 2024 giveaway knife for the gentlemen junkies all right still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to look at some new knives coming out in knife life news and then uh, i want to show you a very very special collaboration between myself and the great and powerful tim kell of t kell knives but first be sure to like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and download the show to your favorite podcast app. Uh, and a great way to help the show, if you if uh, money is not the way you want to do it or can do it, share the show with someone. Send someone this link, and they'll be like, what is this? This is fascinating. Um, somehow, deep down in my DNA, uh, I have an interest in knives, and it's because I'm a human. We could get every human involved in this show if you just share the show. So get humans all over the world involved in this show. Um, knives are the thing. All right, we'll see you in a moment. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Microtech SOCOM Elite is the pinnacle of tactical utility cutlery. The original SOCOM folding knife was introduced in 1996 and has been improved numerous times to become more versatile. The handle shape is unique and designed to fit your hand perfectly. Its rugged reliability makes it the preferred choice of the special operations community. Christian Lishan makes knives one at a time in his own workshop, and his craftsmanship has earned a growing following. The Bunka is a full-tang kitchen knife with a 6.4-inch blade of AEBL stainless steel. Lon Humphrey's handmade blades have gained a strong following over the years, and for good reason. He forges beautiful functional art at his shop in Ohio, using tool steel and premium wood handle scales. The Nesmuk Blacktail is loaded with stunning handle selections, Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News.
If you're going to skip through the commercial breaks on this show, I totally understand. I totally get it. Uh, but don't skip the first one because it's always the knives ship free commercial. And it's the basically all the knives of the week featured by them, new stuff. And it's always total eye candy. Uh, so you should you should probably check that out. Uh, that knives ship free ad. All right. Next up, uh, Life Knife News. Excuse me. CRKT, Columbia River Knife and Tool, is teaming up with or has teamed up with engineering forward knife maker and designer Princeton Wong, uh, a name that I had, frankly had never heard of, but he won a uh, an award at Blade Show Texas uh, for best custom uh, locking folder, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, he's a, a, a real uh, talent. And this knife here is uh, something that'll, uh, that's evidence of that. This is the nucleus an angular aerodynamic and i will add audacious design uh it's to me it's both uh classic and super super fut futuristic but anyway it's it's inspired by something called gundam am anime I, I don't know what the hell gundam is but i guess it's something that started in 1979 and so that's back in my my day so it's something i could easily know it just sort of eluded me uh but it's a long standing anime show or character or something I, I have to do the research on that but this is uh, inspired by the aesthetics of that show which to me makes it seem like a futuristic and pretty cool show uh two versions of this will be coming out that modified warren cliff is 3.19 inches and you can either get it in 12 c 27 n that's obviously the budget model with a steel frame interesting frame if you're if you're watching you can see kind of space through it uh, so it'll be G10, a red and black G10 and the steel frame, or you can get it in Magna Cut, obviously the more expensive version in uh, titanium and carbon fiber. That's what you see on your screen right now. Now there's a second knife uh, from this collaboration here, and this this is my favorite. Uh, you know, I'm Italian and uh, we like wine in my culture, but also uh, my wife, she loves wine. And this would be a cool one actually to gift her. So maybe I'll, I'll keep it down a little. It's called the Fial. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, that's a 3.62 inch either. Again, two different versions, either M390 or 12C27. Uh, beautiful sort of uh, straight spine blade. Uh, but hidden in the spine of the handle is a wine key. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, it's not just a corkscrew that pops out, but it's also that... Um, that lever that pops out of a wine key so you can leverage out the the cork on the bottle itself very very cool design this is one of those things you see and you think um you know i'm not a uh, i'm not an engineer uh, but man i wish i designed that i wish i had that idea i mean i've had an idea for a tactical wine key for a long time but it wasn't it wasn't as cool as this <laughs> uh so uh this will be coming out at blade show both of these knives will be uh, debuting on june 7th the first day of blade show meaning you can get it there at blade show or it'll be available on the crkt website on the same day uh two very cool uh design collaborations with princeton wong a uh, guy to keep your eye on obviously all right, second up, I want to talk about uh, just one of the knives from the new Kershaw uh, release. This is the second release of 2024, and there are, there are some uh, pretty standard-looking uh, things in there. Uh, one of them, actually, is a mini version of the Iridium, which is just exactly this, but a little bit smaller. I'm all for it. If, uh, if this 3.4-inch blade is a little too big for some, I could see uh, wanting a, a, a mini. Uh, but the one I wanted to talk about is the Lunt the launch 20 yeah there's the mini mini iridium handsome looking knife i really really like it uh but the one i want to talk about is the the 20th in the launch series this is the uh usa made kershaw automatic line of knives uh, i believe they have one out the front the live wire and everything else is an out the side push button uh, this one is particularly beautiful in my eye a three inch magna cut blade i wouldn't mind if it were bigger uh, but keeping it small means i don't have to buy it but that's about the profile of the iridium uh warncliffe uh by the by uh but it, three inch magna cut aluminum and carbon fiber very nice looking carbon fiber inlay that handle actually looks uh like it's almost borrowing from the design language of their big brother zt zero tolerance uh coming in at 2.3 ounces nice and light and uh yeah 
there you have it. That's the launch 20. I think it's pretty cool. And I think they're, they put a little extra oomph in this one, uh, seeing as it's their 20th. All right, next up, this is just a quirky little uh, little knife, little story here. Chuck Gadritis, we've had him on the show here. Great guy um, and makes very, very interesting stuff. He's a New England knife maker, and he comes out of sort of a New England school. Uh, a lot of the guys uh, he was inspired by uh, come from up there. And so some... He, he does these amazing automatic knives, and, and he's done a lot of sculptural stuff. I don't know if you remember the Marlin. It's a beautiful little sculpted Marlin that uh, you flick the uh, push a button, and the, and the bill comes out, and it's a blade. He does this beautiful sculptural stuff. Uh, he's been doing the Switch Army knives. You know, those they're multi-tools that look like Swiss Army knives, but you move the scale, and they're automatic, and you see beautiful Damascus blades and that kind of thing. So he's known for that, but he had he made this cool little tiny custom switchblade. It is only slightly larger than that dime it's sitting next to, uh, but super, super premium. Uh, you've got all sorts of exotic materials here, like the uh, like the bolster that uh, is a, a gorgeous um, Damascus. And then the the blade is a different kind of Damascus. And uh, so this thing is. Uh, 2.5 inches when open it's a one inch blade and that's a turkish twist damascus on that blade uh, it's already sold and he's expecting oh that little bar in the bolster is how you actuate it you push that and it rockets out uh, so imagine like all the all the mini engineering in there that's pretty amazing uh similar he's going to be making more and they'll sell for starting at 850 850 for this tiny little uh piece but you know, a lot, it's probably a lot harder to make than a, than a bigger one. And talk about bragging rights, showing that thing off. Uh, so he's going to enter that into the best miniature award at blade show this year. And his table there will be five E definitely stop by Chuck Gadritis's table, uh, past couple of years. Uh, I I'll show up. And by the time I'm at his table, everything is sold, but you can still like marvel at it and pick it up and, and check it out because it's some pretty awesome stuff he makes. Uh, okay, uh, lastly on the list here, Sencut has been uh, putting out, here, this one's pretty cool. Uh, they've been putting out a lot of new knives, a lot of cool knives. This is the uh, Borzam. I've shown this off recently. Well, they have one called the Esca Excalis. Rolls right off my tongue, the Excalis. And it's an all-around competent carry. That's what we're calling it, all-around competent carry. And I'm actually borrowing that term. Uh, from the great and powerful Ben Schwartz of Knife News, uh, without whom I wouldn't know anything about this industry. He's great. I would. I wish he would come on this show. I got to reinvite him again. Uh, I know he's a very busy guy keeping up this website. But anyway, uh, this is a new 2.9 inch 9CR um, Sencut, and it 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 has a. I got to say, it's sort of a, a little throwback with the speed holes. I know that that's in the Sencut Civivi We design language but for some reason on this knife the speed holes and everything this looks like kind of a throwback to a design you might see in like 2013 except it would have like a rubberized handle and a um uh assisted blade or something and and that is not in any way a diss something about this is charming it's a little chubby uh you know a chode knife as 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 uh, a frankie and bird would call it thumb stud and flipper uh and a really interesting blade um it I, I think uh it's it's got a bit of it's got a great point it's got a nice belly it's got a little bit of straight and it just kind of looks cool it's got a little bit of panache It'll stretch it out and i think it's a looker kind of heavy 3.93 ounces for this three inch blade but uh you'll know it's in your hand anyway it's substantial uh g10 micarta and that giro Buatia wood help me help me someone in the comments uh put a uh if you don't mind put a phonetic spelling of that geo Bjorcia wood that they use on um, send cut knives um i've said it two different ways there and um, i'm not sure if either one are correct all right coming up in the state of the collection i'll show you uh one of the most exciting things i've received since i got the nova one or the Nova 2. Uh, so we'll you'll see that in just a second. But before we go there, uh, I just want to say thank you all for watching and listening. 
And don't forget that uh, Jim creates T-shirts uh, and uh, we have a lot of T-shirts on our website. You got to check it out. Like Got Knives, uh, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop and check it out. He's kind of always, uh, and it's not just uh, with T-shirts. I think this has become a, a, a great way to monetize his tinkering because Jim is an endless creative tinkerer and it's awesome. He's always coming up with new ideas and cool new uh projects he came up with a really cool piece of artwork uh, the other day so anyway knifejunkie.com slash shop the shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion featuring a powerful led bulb that lasts 100,000 hours a super sharp crenulated bezel and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts don't settle for ordinary choose the shockwave tactical torch the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave and now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I finally got him. And the funny thing is, is I got him on the same day that uh, Tomas Alas and um, Jared Neve got theirs. So I can't wait to hear what they have to say about these things. But these are the latest TKL knives. Uh, knives is the Agent 001. And you know, if you've been here at all, this is, this is the knife that I uh, I designed and collaborated on with uh, Tim. Um, this is a, a true collaboration because like everyone I talk to on this show, uh, on the interview show, especially people who have uh, projects OEM'd who aren't building things by themselves, they, they draw out a design and send it to someone who's going to make it. And then the someone who's going to make it has engineering requirements and knowledge. And so that was a really cool experience working with Tim uh, on the handle. Tim did some reworking of this hook portion or, or well, the, the whole handle and really perfected uh, the concept I sent him. Not only did he, he perfect it, but also made it more um, ours, if, if you will. Uh, what I sent him looked a little bit more like, uh, you know, had a, a, a hook on the end that looked more like he compared it to someone, um, com um, compliance edge. And I, I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, I agree. And so he said, I have an idea of how we can make it our own and make it uh, even more ergonomic uh, for the draw. And so he came up with this, this curved portion here and this, this whole, I mean, this whole handle he, he reworked and um, man, it's been a real honor because he knows what the hell he's doing and he took me seriously. And this is uh, this is what we've come up with. And he keeps saying it's his best blade ever. And I'm not going to I'm not going to interrupt him when he's saying that. Uh, I certainly happen to agree. But uh, everything I have by him is is amazing. Uh, so let me tell you a little uh, about the design of this. It was meant to fit exactly in the profile of his most popular knife, the TKL knives, most popular knife, the night stalker. And, and I got to say, this is a knife I carry all the time. That's why I wanted to make something that carried and fit in the same profile as the night stalker. Um, this knife, if you can, if you can see it here, has the same blade length and the same handle length. It's just that on the agent series, because this is a series he's designed a whole bunch of other blades for this. Uh, so it, this is going to be awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, for this whole series, instead of the ring, it's the it's the sort of bird's beak pommel that allows you to to draw it quickly. Is that where I was going with this? Yeah. Anyway, same size blade, same size handle, fits in the same uh, profile with these with this amazing sheath. Uh, and the sheath is a little bit different than some of the older or or some of the TKL knives sheaths that have come before, which are optimized for thinness. So have only had uh, the slots for lashing on one side. Uh, this one, he has, since the blade is already thin, he was able to maintain the thinness of the blade while still allowing for lashing slots on either side. So you might not be wearing this knife on your belt like I do or in your waistband like I sometimes do uh, or will be doing, but you might have this on your, you know, LBE or your tactical vest or whatever it is. And you might need different sorts of lashing points. So um, here, here, this is accommodated here. Then you have large size grommets uh, for mounting, and then these micro grommets are, you know, keep everything discreet and allow these slots to be larger. Just a great sheath. Uh, that 
the sheath is a is half the knife with tkl knives i mean they really do a lot of engineering around the sheath so uh very excited about that and and really excited that we were able to keep it in the same um size envelope as the night stalker and the mr1 so uh tim sent me three versions here well they're not versions he sent these are both double edged that's the original uh design and then for those of you who cannot carry a double edged knife or uh don't feel like you want it or you want to use this for other stuff uh, i showed this to a guy at the pool a, a neighborhood friend and he's like I'd, I'd use this for for skinning it's a nice size i would use it for skinning a, an animal and i said oh it's totally I, I wasn't thinking that at all but if you had an uh, one without an edge on the back you could do that uh, or you know you just don't want to get thrown in the clink for having uh, two edges in your in your part of town you have this option uh these are going to be debuting at blade show and um i can't remember the number he's bringing i think like i don't remember how many he's bringing but i have a feeling that they're going to go quickly and and that makes me uh <laughs> that makes me excited it'll be cool to see people uh checking it out and and kind of trying to be a fly on the wall and hear what they have to say about it now i used to do that um when i when i was exhibiting paintings uh way long long ago and i just kind of lurk around and listen to what people had to say and i was making provocative paintings so i liked to hear how it was provoking people um but this will be a better this will be a better more positive uh, way to to lurk and lurk and listen uh just a couple more things this is aevl and nickel boron coated so you know that nickel boron coating that tkel knives uses used on machine gun parts and uh super high friction um machine parts uh so the it makes the stainless steel here or it makes the steel here uh, very slick and um also adds to its rockwell hardness so a very very cool addition this one is the purple burl here's the blue burl here's like a a, a, a wood burl uh, all g10s and they have like 27 options including micartas and uh um yeah just i think micarta i don't think they do carbon fiber and so he's going to bring a whole variety of these to blade show and if you're there you'll get to buy one uh and if not i know he's going to make more and you can buy them on the website so i'm really excited about this it's a it's a great honor uh to see something that i drew out uh, masterfully uh, made by one of my favorite knife makers all right i'm gonna put this one away the purple one is mine uh it's, it's all set up the way i like it and uh very excited i mean you know what can i say all right let me put these over here and uh, let's get to the main topic here uh, it has everything to do with what we were just talking about uh custom double-edged fixed blades um and the reason I'm going custom here is because actually, uh, I don't think I have any production. Uh, I don't think I have any production knives that fit this category, but also um, <clears throat> with the Nova 2, which will also be available after Blade Show, and the um, and the TKL knives, uh, uh, Agent 001, which is a custom knife because you're buying the handle how you want it, and it's small batch uh, made. Everything is hand sharpened and everything like that. So... Uh, it's just got me hot on that topic because uh, uh, people aspire to custom knives, at least I did, uh, not because, oh, I want to be able to brag I have custom knives, but to know that there is a uh, something special attention went into the knife itself by the person who made it um, means a lot to me. And then, of course, doing this show, I've developed relationships with, with the people who make them, so that makes it even uh, better. But But you don't have to have a show. All you have to do is reach out to a custom maker and start working with them. And it's it's a really amazing experience. And when we're talking fixed blade knives, it's an affordable experience. And I'm, I know you got to save up for it, but it's worth saving up for. Um, instead of getting a, a hundred Civivi or you know, instead of getting uh, 10 Civivis this month, maybe you'll save up this month and next month and deny yourself a little bit and then have something totally unique that's just yours, that you will be proud to hand down. Not that I'm not proud to hand down something like this to my daughters, but much more proud to hand down something like this Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. This is Eric Kramer, not Bob Kramer. Bob Kramer is a famous uh, chef's knife maker uh, who I 
who I need to talk to. Uh, but this is Eric Kramer, and uh, you know this knife. This is the Voodoo. This was one of my very first EDC carry knives, um, and it is so nice and thin. That's part of what makes the experience uh, so uh, enjoyable carrying this knife. It's nice and thin. It's got a relatively neutral handle here that you could uh, you could easily use in a reverse grip uh, Pical style if you wanted to, or however you needed to 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 uh, change your grip on this, it accommodates. It has this nice curved back part of the handle, which is to me essential uh, in a, a fixed blade knife that's going in the waistband because it's going, you know, my weight like your weight fluctuates. And sometimes I have a little bit more back here and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have a little more up front and sometimes I don't. And those are the places I carry, either three o'clock or appendix. And if you have a little extra meat there, you want the surfaces of your knife handle to be rounded and kind and soft. So you're not constantly feeling poked. So ergonomically speaking, not only in hand, but in, in belt, this thing is incredible. Uh, an upswept Persian with a, uh, I hadn't sharpened the swedge. So that's a nice sort of buoy style uh, he likes to call it a persian i like to call it a uh, more of a clip point but doesn't matter it's just an awesome awesome knife kramer customs uh kramer custom knives he's been doing these incredible uh carry sogs that are so cool uh, uh mac v sog style blades that are so cool and everything else he does is awesome too so check out eric uh, kramer custom knives and this is the great sheath by the way uh, it, this was the first sheath I ever had a discrete carry concepts clip on, and I was immediately sold. And by the way, this sheath is nicely rounded in all those uh, areas too, because this will be pressed up against your body in the waistband uh, if that's how you carry it. And it's nice to have all of those surfaces rounded off on the sheath. All right, next up, this one is from Ron Steele. Uh, Ron Steele is someone that I discovered on Instagram. I discovered someone that I, I became familiar with through his postings on Instagram and sort of saw him from the start of his uh, making maybe five years ago and really fell in love with his knives, especially after uh, who was it? Someone sent me wasn't someone sent me a ron steel prime oh it was justin of tier one sent me a ron steel prime buoy and a ron steel prime this is the prime the other one's the prime buoy oh, two great knives but i i decided to order a prime from him because it's a very unique uh profile it's a uh a drop point like i had never seen before so i i thought wouldn't that be cool if he could double edge it and he figured out a way to double edge it or i should say uh he had never made one and he said i'll figure out how to do it and he did a beautiful job i uh, can't remember what the steel is i have to find the birth card of this uh, you can see his maker's mark right there an ace of spades or uh, yeah ace of spades right there and the steel has an interesting treatment on it it's like it's got this um i don't know it's sort of roughed uh rough um, bevel and it's a result of the uh, acid stone wash he did uh, on this uh, on the certain kind of steel it sort of uh, did an interesting thing with the surface uh, the handle here is black and a uh, gray g10 with maroon micarta this was one of my first maroon micarta knives and uh, absolutely love it this has not gotten a lot of carry recently i gotta say i carried it a lot when i first got it but you know how it is. You get new stuff and you have to rotate stuff in. So I got to get back to my uh, some of my old girls here and give them a little attention. Uh, all right. So this is the Ron Steele Prime. Now, this one uh, I've been carrying quite a bit recently. This is one that I uh, was seeking out at Blade Show last year. Uh, this is the SD1 from Stroop Knives, and it's their push dagger. I was, I was at Blade last year looking for a push dagger and found a couple of cool ones almost got the jed hornbeak one but i wanted a double edge and um i also was definitely looking for an asymmetrical handle where the blade is coming between coming out between the uh, swear word finger and the forefinger and 
I feel like you have more control when it's up top like that than when it's coming between coming out between the center fingers. Uh, I just don't like that as much. Um, plus, with this one, uh, I feel like when it comes through those fingers, you can have a slightly wider uh, throat here on the blade, which this is. Uh, and it separates my fingers a little bit, but not in any way painful. However, if I change grips to the center, which you wouldn't do anyway because you don't have enough handle under that forefinger. But if I'm to squeeze like that, that is too wide for between these fingers. So uh, I think a lot of uh, a lot of thought and R&D went into the design of this. Um, and the, the angles here are super obtuse. Uh, so it's not going to be much of a slasher. I mean, you will require some power. They are sharp, but pretty obtuse edges here. So it will require some power. This is definitely a thrusting knife. How do I carry it? I carry it in the waistband, obviously. Uh, you can tell from that clip. And uh, my pants go like this, and the handle kind of hangs over like that. Over on the uh, appendix, or up right up front, appendix style. Uh, next up. Tkel knives. Now, this one I don't carry often. I did when I first got it, but I got the Night Stalker and the MR1 and some of the other knives that are even more in my um, wheelhouse, if you will, my carry uh, profile. This is the Guardian. This thing is a wicked, wicked triple edged sheep's foot. And it is a chunk. It's a chunk, a beautiful slab of steel with nickel boron coating this is 80 crv when i say a chunk i don't mean it's overwhelmingly large what i do mean though is look at how shallow the bevels are and this is a different kind of knife um because uh this is not for cutting cheese this is not for even cutting rope this is for uh this is for splitting and cutting skin and thrusting uh, this is a self-defense knife through and through and that super oblique edge is is incredibly effective against soft targets um so that was the that was the drive behind this speaking of drive when you drive this into soft matter it creates a very large hole an ever widening hole and uh because it's you, you got you've got a wedge there a wedge shape so a super unique knife uh tr you don't see too many triple edge uh, knives, but you're going to see two in this list. That's right. Uh, again, purple. I didn't realize I must have a thing for, for purple. Uh, this is the, uh, the handle material on this. Uh, this knife also comes with a guardian grip. It doesn't come with it. You have to order it special, but you can get one for this knife and it's a replaceable scale that has a karambit ring milled into the end. Um, for, for me, it's a little too um, far down to use as a karambit, but is a great way to draw the knife, especially if you're carrying it horizontally uh, front scout. So a very interesting knife from, from T. Kell Knives. One of the first ones um, in one of his first offerings, and I remember when uh, OG Blades, Dave had this, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a revelation. And I finally got one. And yeah, it is indeed a revelation. Next up, I think this is my, this is like my second ever uh, custom fixed blade, and I carried this for a while. I can't believe I did now because it's it's kind of large. There are a couple of here that are on the larger side, uh, but this just takes up a good bit of space. But how I used to carry it was scout style on my back, and I could easily hide it under sweaters and stuff because I would have the handle pointing upward, and then I I totally quit uh, carrying anything in the small of my back after landing on it um, and just messing around and realizing, oh, that sucks. That is so painful, so painful. And then also if it's scout style, but on the front, then you can reach it. If you land on your stomach, you can kind of reach it with both hands or whatever. All right. But this one is the Black Rock Knives Monkey Thumper. And it is a beautiful, beautiful knife. And I got to say, would be uh, one hell of a knife to have on you if you needed to fight with a knife. Um, it's got that karambit ring, but you don't need to use it at all uh, in the forward grip. It's, it's, it, the handle is set up great uh, to, to hold just without putting your pinky through. That's actually kind of weird and uncomfortable. But like this, it feels great. And then you have a, a pointed pommel here you can use 
uh, for pain compliance or whatever attitude adjustment. And then if you have it in reverse grip, you don't need it either. Uh, the ring, you can uh, put your thumb up on top and you can also use this uh, forward puño. Uh, but, but the ring is also uh, not bad at all in this reverse grip doesn't work forward grip for me uh but what it's really there for is drawing the knife and and clearing the knife uh from the sheath this is another case where uh he hadn't done a double edge of this yet and uh i asked him to and he was like sure and he put it on there and it's awesome by the way he doesn't sound like that he's he's more like he's like a big dude so he said sure bob I'll double edge that tough guy. And I said, okay, thanks. Uh, sharpening notch right here. Really excellent if you're going to take it that far. And then also you would have that on the swedge. I love the texturing on the on the side. That rock pattern texturing is so beautiful, so attractive. And this knife all, all together is built like a tank and just impeccably, uh, impeccably done. Oh, having this out, I should start carrying this again. Uh, I did put on a discreet carry concepts clip and had it in the waistband for a little while, but I did not find that comfortable due to that pointy thing and my uh, spare tire, as I was mentioning before. Next up, this one is, uh, oh, this has become a, a, a quick favorite over the past two years. This is the uh, Pocket Rocket uh, double-edged uh, three-inch dagger by auxiliary manufacturing um great blade great sh wickedly wickedly sharp beautifully ground quad uh quad bevels here all done by hand when he was when he did this i'm not sure if he's still doing it that way uh, beautifully beautifully uh done but then the handle god i love the handle on this uh it is in cross section octagonal and when you look at it just from the profile view, you'll see it's faceted, um, in it, it's faceted and scooped, in in such a way that your fingers are burying in there. It has no guard, uh, but whether you have it in this sideways sort of shovel grip, or you have it in a standard uh, saber grip or reverse grip, however you have it, your fingers are landing in one of these swales because as you turn the knife handle you'll see it's a swale on all surfaces uh, so great grip it looks good it feels good it's another example of one of those knives with angular handles that feels really good in our hand you know we always think that round is ergonomic and round is ergonomic uh, but so is this kind of angular uh, surface it's round basically if you squint your eyes uh, but you can feel those uh, angles and those angles are what stop the knife from twisting in hand. Those angles are what uh, give you positive grip. Uh, the roundness is for comfort. The angles are for positive grip. A great sheath on this one, a million little grommets to uh, fasten your, your, your um, discreet carry style clip. That's what this shipped with. It's a nice, uh, I have a little bicycle tire thing here uh, just to keep it from slipping around and to keep this uh, in position in, uh, in, my, in my waistline. Because this one in particular with that very straight handle has to ride at, a, at an angle like this in my waistband. It's not going up and down like that. It's riding like that. All right, next up, uh, the second triple edge in this, in this uh, list. Also, I have that uh, t uh, tire inner tube there to keep this from swiveling because i only have one lash point there uh, but this is the fire ant from dirk pinkerton this is a, a custom dirk pinkerton uh with the all three edges sharpened it's a if you're going to call anything a reverse tanto i guess i would say this is a reverse tanto and uh because it is a <laughs> it because it's a sheep's foot but it's got a point there so it really in, instead of a little hump it's got a point so yeah I guess you could call that a reverse Tonto. Uh, edge all the way up to that awesome jimping. This one is really easy to carry. It's a nice size. And though it doesn't have a rounded handle, uh, rounded pommel, it angles off perfectly uh, for when it's in the waistband. Um, also, it's perfectly angled for reverse grip right like this. Kind of hook the thumb right over that uh, peak. But you have this area here. Um, 
to shore it up. This thing is really cool. D2 blade steel. I got this at Blade Show last year. Uh, <laughs> it's becoming a trend that I get a uh, knife from him at Blade Show, and that's a good trend. I should keep that rolling. Uh, this is the Fire Ant. Now, this one they turned into a um, a folder with Kaiser for a time. I'm not sure if that's still in print. All right, now this is the the largest in the group, and I EDC'd it. For about two weeks after I got it, because I was so excited about it, and I still am, but I don't find myself, at least not in the summer weight clothing I'm wearing right now, carrying this. Uh, but this is the Necromance from Jed Hornbeak Knives, a truly uh, wicked double-edged fighting knife. I'm so in love with this design still, and, and the way it melts in hand is just positively glorious. It feels so good in hand, uh, but... That comfort, I was I was saying round is for comfort. Yeah, well, this this round also just locks you in due to that profile. Uh, lots of jimping here, too. Just incredibly machined uh, knives uh, are, are Jed Hornbeak knives. I've experienced them, uh, a few of them, and then I had to buy one. I had to get this one. Uh, he only made three of these, and I was so excited to, to land this one. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who else got uh, one of my one of my buddies here got one of the other ones. Oh, who got it? Uh, can't remember who got one of the other ones. Uh, but anyway, three of these were made, and I got one of them. So so happy. I would love it if he made a necromance with a six inch blade or six and a half inch blade, or even a seven inch blade would be so cool. So this with a longer blade, basically. Uh, but but in this configuration with that five inch blade uh it can run three o'clock if you've got a sweater or something to cover it up it is pretty uh, uh conspicuous and though legal uh it would ruffle some feathers in, in my in my area <clears throat> all right second to last here is the jb knife and tool um ditch pick uh this is a great one i have this set up for uh, appendix carry um, just an awesome 16 inch thin, 16th of an inch thin, um, 1095, uh, with a very springy temper to it, uh, and double edges. So this is one of the first Pakal style knives that really, uh, got my attention when, when the style and the format was just sort of, uh, really hit in stride. That handle drew me in and the blade obviously drew me in. But I had never seen a double-edged version of this until this drop. And so I opted for that. You could get a single edge, which is only sharpened on the Pakal side. You could have gotten a bayonet ground one where it's all the way sharp on the Pakal side and halfway up the spine side or this double edge. And I really vacillated between the bayonet ground and the double edge. And I said, you know, I thought the bayonet looked cooler. But I thought, why would I go? Why would I half step it on the edge? Why would I not? Especially if it's the leading edge i might really just want that or need that in my next duel very cool logo they're out of texas so you got that whoops you got the lone star there look at that knife that thing is so attractive and it's it's very 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 thin but uh in talking with uh brian of jb knife and tool they do extensive testing and and uh, torquing and stabbing of of two by fours and bending and vices and stuff to make sure that their ditch models the ditch models are the sixteenth of an inch thin uh, versions of their other models uh, that they're not uh, weak or going to bend and and they've ha have it nailed. All right, last up in this list is. Uh, well, it's a little bit of self-promotion, and uh, it's the new TKL Knives Agent 001. I'm going to show you this version of it and tell you about a couple of a um, uh, couple of uh, features that I didn't mention. Uh, we went out of our way to put jimping here, uh, right back here on the pommel, uh, not only for uh, for gription when you're capping the um, pommel with your thumb in a reverse grip. That works great there. Uh, but here for when you're drawing it, because uh, I was adamant, well, I, I shouldn't say I was adamant, but I was really uh, looking for this to be a scout style knife 
that I draw reverse grip. So I really wanted to have that jimping on the thumb. And and then Tim was like, oh, oh, oh. And then <laughs> he added this super cool pyramidal uh, point here for glass breaking or attitude adjustment right there on the pommel. And a cool thing about that is I was like, I, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's going to get in the way. It doesn't. You don't feel it at all uh, when you're capping the thumb. And it's because it's at that, that angle. It's not pointing straight out. It's pointing out in that direction. And it's just your thumb just rides right over it. Uh, the, the swales here, I had really sharp partitions and, um, you know, separating the fingers. And um, it wasn't working for Tim's hands. He's got bigger hands than I do. And uh, he's like, let me, let me try this. So he rounded these out and, and all the while uh, he's, he's doing these kind of uh, 3d prints like this one to sort of feel, see how they feel. And he rounded out the handle there and rounded out this area and made it less uh, abrupt and boom, the handle was born. And this thing is great, feels so great. And I can't wait to check out, uh, he's got a Warncliffe, that's the Agent 002. There's gonna be uh, other blade designs. And uh, yeah, it's just very exciting. Uh, there's my maker's mark there, the knife junkie on that side. And uh, really, um, I, I have it in this list of favorite uh, top 10 multi-edge EDC fixed blades uh, because that's, that's what I designed it for. I designed it for everyday carry and I wanted a, a double edge. So this for me personally is, is the, is the ultimate for now in, in double edged EDC fixed blades. Who knows? Who knows where we'll go uh, later. I know that Tim and I are going to work on more projects because uh, we enjoyed working on this one together. So uh, look forward to that. All right. Uh, if you're going to blade show and you see me, please come up and say hi. Um, I don't know what you look like, but you know what I look like, and I want to meet you. So come say hi, and uh, let's talk knives in person. All right. Uh, that's been it uh, for this show. Thanks for watching. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.